So we have begun the live stream. So we'll begin the Dua Basmallah. يا ربي يا رحمن يا حنان يا منان يا ذا الجلال والإكرام يا قدوس يا صمد يا ودود ليس كمثل بشيء وهو السميع البصير يا أحد يا قهار يا واسع يا جبار يا متكبر يا الله أنت الأحد ولم يلد ولم يولد ولم يكن له كفوا أحد يا قابض يا باسط يا الله والله يقبض ويبسط ويبسط وإليه ترجعون يا نافي يا دار يا الله إنما يجشين الشيطان ليحزن الذين آمنوا وليس بالضارهم شيئا إلا بإذن الله وآل الله فليتوكل المؤمنون يا من تكن يا تواب يا الله ربنا وجعلنا مسلمين لك ومن ذريتنا أمة مسلمة لك وعلنا مناسكنا وتب علينا إنك أنت التواب الرحيم يا رحمن رحمتك وسير كل شيء يا رحمن وجل رحمتك رحمة رحمن يا مؤيز يا مذل يا رحمن وتؤيز من تشاء وتذل من تشاء بيدك الخير إنك على كل شيء قدير ونعم المانع الحميد لله ما في السماوات ولا دون الله هو العين الحميد يا أيها الناس أنتم الفقراء إلى الله والله هو العين الحميد يا رزاق يا مقيت يا رحمن من يشفع شفاة حسنة يكون له نصيب منها وما يشفع شفاة سيئة يكون له كفو منها رحمن الله ولا كل شيء قيدا يا فتا يا وحاب يا رحمن فعلم ما في قلوبهم فأنزل السكينة عليهم وثابة فتحا كريبا يا قدوس يا سند يا ودول كل ما زله روح القدس من ربك بالحق ولثابت الذين آمنوا وهدى وبشرى للمسلمين يا أحد يا سمد الذي لم يلد ولم يولد ولم يكن له كفوا أحد واستغفروا ربكم ثم توبوا إليه إن رابرا رحيم ودود وهو الغفور الودود ربنا إنك تحب العفو وإنك عفو كريم تحب العفو فاعفو عنا يا ربنا يا مولانا يا معلوماتنا بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم قد لنا بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم من ورائنا بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم من فوقنا بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم من تحتنا بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم عن عماننا بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم عن شمائلنا نحن أدو إليك على بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم يا رباه يا رحمن يا الله السلام عليكم ورحمة الله جزاكم الله خير It's good to see all of you So we will we will we will get right into it because we have a short time before Maghrib So we were doing the commentary on Dua Nasiri uh, most of you have it. If you don't, it is on the website, inshallah. But we came to page eight, um, and in page eight and onwards, for the new people, just to recap, the first two thirds of the du'a were dealing a lot with uh, uh, how we understand Allah, with aqidah, and how we understand ourselves, which the author of the du'a had a very good grasp of. And hence why when we do the commentary of it, it is actually a lesson in Aqidah also. And then he talked about the best way to, to make dua when you have enemies is that you ask Allah that their evil is contained amongst them. So not without hatred in one's heart. Uh, so it is, this is very important that we don't let hatred enter our heart when people uh, are, have enmity, enmity towards us. But we ask Allah that he will look after us and that evil is reflected back to them and then he talked about all the good things that he was praying for which is a very beautiful series of uh, of requests uh, for Dawlat al-Islam for really a Muslim land with, with their people 
who are in need find refuge uh, when there is peace and prosperity and barakah most importantly and then he comes to the end of the dua there he says by this and by this and by this and by this and these are very powerful realities so the person who wrote this rahimahullah uh, obviously knew a few things uh, so we will speak speak a little bit about that now onwards till the end inshallah so i'll read from page 8 وَجَالْ بِسَادٍ وَبِقَافٍ وَبِنُونٍ أَلْفَ حِجَابٍ مِنْ وَرَائِهَا يَكُونٍ So he says, by Saad, Qaf, and Noon, place a thousand veils in front of it. In front of it here meaning uh, uh, the protected home that he is asking for. And this, this dua, uh, if you recall, was written uh, and, and made a lot when the French were invading the Maghreb. And the French were so afraid of it, they used to ban it. They used to not let people get together and recite it. So they would get together and recite it in Jama'ah. It's a very powerful dua. So what does he mean by Wabi Saadin, Wabi Kafin, Wabi Noon? And then uh, many books have been written on, on these uh, letters. And we say the Quran has been revealed in Arabic. Uh, and every letter in it has a, a mystical reality and an external reality, a reality in the external dimension and the internal dimension, uh, and every sound of it. So Saad, Qaf, and Noon, these are, can, does anyone recognize where they come in the Quran? Saad, Qaf, and Noon? You know about the Muqattaat letters, huh? Huh. So there are certain ayat, surahs in the Quran that will start with what we call Oh, okay. Naam, these letters, the mystical letters, where nobody really knows what they mean. So how many letters are there in total? There are actually 14 letters in total. So half the Arabic alphabet uh, is included in those Mukatta letters. So the one of the best known is Yasin. Huh? Yeah, and, yeah. Huh? and then Surah Al-Baqarah, Alif Yam. So there is a surah called Surah Saad and Surah Qaf and where does Noon come? Yes. And Surah Qalam. Noon, Wal Qalam, Wa So these three letters are the only, um, so the only letters that actually come as singletons in the Quran to start a surah, right? Um, and it's very interesting, uh, Subhanallah, uh, noon, comes, um, noon comes once, there's only in Surah Qalam, Noon, Wal Qalam, Wal Qalam, Qaf comes twice in Surah Qaf, and there is, anyone remembers? That's a bit of a tricky one, uh, in Surah uh, Shura, Hamim, Ayn Sameen, Qaf, in the second ayat, Surah so, And Surah Shura is one of the seven that have Hamim at the beginning. So there's that series of seven that have Hamim. Uh, so Qaf comes twice, and Saad comes uh, three times. So you have that once, twice, and three times. Uh, where does Saad come? Easy one, famous one. Surah Maryam. And then also it comes in Surat Araf. And then the last one, the last one is a bit tricky. Where does the last one come? You can look that up and tell me. Oh, Surat Saad, obviously. <laughs> Subhanallah. So, okay. And then, uh, and then we say, if you remember from very early lessons, we said that the Quran, we have seven words in the Quran. These are the only seven words that Allah has qualified as a Jalla uh, by the statement, I love. In Allah, yuhibbuna. And can anyone remember those seven words, the seven qualities? People who are there at the beginning. Allah says, in Allah yuhibbuna mutatahhirin. In Allah yuhibbuna. Ah, mutat oh, very good. In Allah yuhibbuna asabirin. Ah, mashallah. And then, so you have uh, muttaqin. You have taqwa, tahara, 
توبة توكل صبر قسط وإحسان We call these the seven words of the Quran And if you one way there are many 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 ways of inter of understanding Allah's Kalamullah Azza wa Jalla and that will never end but one of the ways we understand it is that we say if you look at the Quran everything will come back to those seven words because these are the only words where Allah Azza wa Jalla actually says I love he doesn't use I love for anything else not for the people who pray or fast or the people who do jihad he says many things about them that are very good but you do all of that in order to attain one of these characteristics. So you become, through your prayer or your fasting, one of the people of Sabr or the people of Taqwa or Tahara. Very difficult. And we say that if you can try in your entire lifetime to attain one, you have succeeded. So that when people look at you, they don't say, oh, so and so is this and this, or oh, so and so uh, is a muttaqi. Uh, oh so and so is one who has tawakkul have you met people like that when you meet them you their character is so apparent that you will say ah that one is someone who is like this not these days no <laughs> very very rare so let me try to write so it's a bit tricky with all of these technology things okay so okay so what are the what are the uh, the seven Tauba, Tawakul, Tahara. What does Tahara mean? Ah, ma'am. Tauba, Tawakul, Tahara, Taqwa. And then we have Qist. What does Qist mean? Qist means to be upright. Ihsan and Sabr. Each of these is composed of two qualities and these two qualities link up to the 14 uh, mystical letters. So you can see wherever you have, I won't give you all of that for today, it's too much, but the two qualities that make up Sabr is Hill. What is Hilm? 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 You know that's the name of people, Halim. What is Hilm? No, Hilm actually means to be forbearant. Forbearant means when something is coming at you, you can stop and not oh, react. Yes. No reaction, right? It's part of patience, sabr. Hilm wa'anat, there's a, a famous hadith my teacher would always talk about where a delegation came to the to, to meet Rasulullah in the time of Medina and they had come a very long way to meet him. So as soon as they entered the city, you know, they're dusty and tired. Everyone in the delegation ran. They just dropped everything, ran. We want to see Rasulullah But one of the older or older gentlemen uh, he took his time, he put his camel, looked after the camel, had a shower, changed, and he came very late. So the rest of them were very annoyed <laughs> with this person. I said, he's not respecting the Prophet, or what is this? But the Prophet praised him, and he said, you have hell or anat. You have two qualities that are very hard for people to attain. You have forbearance, and anat is a, is a quality meaning sort of taking your time to do things. You take your time to know that you're, it is the right time, then you act. And Sabr comes with Hilm or Anat. The other one I think we'll do today is Tauba. Tauba has two words, uh, Inaba wa uh, Kaslim. These words are derived from the Quran. In case any of you are wondering where they come from, and we'll, we'll, we'll understand that a little bit, inshallah, today. Inaba is reversion, the quality of going back, returning. Taslim is uh, being at peace. So when you revert back to your Lord, you attain peace, right? To be content. 
everything is now back to where it's supposed to be. And this is what Tauba really means, that you have both of these. Um, so you will see if you go to Surah Saad, which is the 38th Surah of the Quran, this is a Surah, uh, its main word is the word of Tauba. The quality of this Surah is Tauba. We should also all bring Qurans, I think, with the, with the translation that, that I use uh, Imam Fuad's translation, which is very clear, very easy. Uh, but it will be good to bring it and, and read. So Surat Sa'ad, uh, to summarize it, I don't know if it's a good idea to summarize. Uh, but it will be, begin like this, I will be the Shaitan version. Sa'ad wal Qur'an idil zikri by the Qur'an full of remembrance. Yeah. Surat uh, Qalam, sorry, Surat Qaf, which is the 50th surah, it begins in a very similar way. The ayah is, it goes like this, Awad Bani Shaykh. Qaf wal Qur'an il Majid, again swearing by the Qur'an. Sa'ad swears by the Qur'an, and the Qur'an here is qualified by the phrase, uh, the uh, dil zikr. Uh, the Quran which is full of remembrance hmm? which is a strange phrase it's a strange phrase full of remembrance and Surah uh, Qaf uh, Al Quran Wal Quran Il Majid by the Quran the glorious and Surah Qalam Noon Wal Qalam Wa Ma Yasturun by the pen and what it writes so all of these surahs begin with Allah swearing by a certain thing and they have there is a linking in these meanings so surat Sa'ad, to go back to it this is the longest of the three uh, surahs uh, hmm, i don't know it is better to read the whole surah but it is very long we'll read it inshallah you should read it otherwise you won't be paying attention so I will just read the English uh, to make it quicker. Sa'ad, uh, by the Quran, full of the remembrance. Nay, those who be disbelieve are in, are in vain glory and dissension. How many of a generation before them have we destroyed and they called out for salvation when the time of escape had long gone by? And they wonder that a warner has come to them from among themselves and the disbelievers say, this is a magician full of lies. Uh, Subhanallah, magician comes also in Surah uh, Qalam. Uh, has he made the deities into one deity? Truly, this surely is a thing astonishing. And the chiefs among them go about saying that, walk on your way and hold steadfastly onto your deities. Truly, this surely is a thing most desired. We have never heard of this in the later religion. This is but a fabrication. Same thing happens in Surah Qalam. Right? When Rasulullah starts preaching, these are all the things they accuse him of. Is the remembrance sent down on him from among us? Nay, they are in misgivings about my remembrance. Nay, they have not yet tasted my punishment. Or is it that with them are the treasures of mercy of your Lord, the Almighty, the All Endowing? Or is it that theirs is the dominion of the heavens and of the earth and what is between them? Then let them ascend into the doors of the heavens and the earth. Whatever hosts of the confederates there may be, they are bound to be defeated. Before them be lied the people of Noah and Ad and, and Fir'aun, the owners of the uh, uh, Autad, the pegs. And the Amud and the people of Luth and the inhabitants of the wooded vales, those are the confederates. There is no one of them except that they be lied the messengers, so my chastisement was rightly passed against them. And these are waiting for nothing except for one deafening blast from which there will be no recovery for them. And they say, O oh, our Lord, bring to us in haste a share of punishment before the day of reckoning. Bear with patience all that they say and remember our servant Dawood, the master of power. Hmm. Truly he was the one who, who, who was a crier to Allah. We indeed caused the mountains to be subjects to him, then glorify with him our praises in the even, evening and at sunrise. And the birds all assembled, all crying unto Allah after, after his manner. Uh, this glorification at, at sunrise and the evening comes also in Surah uh, Qaf. 
Hmm? And we talk about the importance of those times later. And we have strengthened his kingdom and we gave him the wisdom and distinctiveness in speech. And has the news of the contendants come to you when they scale the wall of the innermost chamber? This story is important, so pay attention. And has the news of the contendants come to you when they scale the wall of the innermost chamber? When they suddenly came in upon David, so he was attained by fear from them, they said, Do not fear, we are two contendants. One of us has trespassed against the other, therefore judge between us by the truth, and do not transgress and guide us to the path most even. This indeed is my brother. He has 99 ewes and I have only one ewe. But he said, put her in my charge. And he was overwhelmed and he has overwhelmed me in speech. He said, he has indeed wronged you by asking you to add your ewe to his ewes. And truly many of the associates do trespass against one another, except those who have full belief and work righteousness and few are they. Thereupon David thought that he had just tried him. So he sought forgiveness from his Lord and fell down and return to his Lord. So this is Ayah uh, 24, and this is an Ayah of uh, Sujur. Okay, so we granted forgiveness to him about that, and truly for him with us uh, is truly a place of proximity and an excellent place of return. And here the, the Ayah that I read before, where Dawud salam thought he had made a mistake, and he went to Ruku and asked forgiveness. The Ayah ends, well, uh, um, Right? It ends with Anaba. Anaba. He reverted back. This is, a, uh, this is the word of Allah. So the story was that clear? I'll, I'll sh so that Dawud was in his chamber. Suddenly two people appeared in front in his room. Right? From where he doesn't know. And he was a bit scared. How did these two people come? And they said to him, don't be afraid. Uh, we have something you have to settle. He's the king. We have a dispute. You have to settle it. One of us has 99 ewes, sheep. The other one has one. And the one who has 99 wants the one too. So Dawud as any reasonable human being would do so. This is not fair. You have 99. Why are you asking the other one? And he said this. This was his judgment. And then he immediately realized, no, Allah is testing me. Because I spoke without consulting with my Lord. I spoke from my own self. And he immediately realized, I have made a mistake. Because he is a prophet of God. They are held to a very, very high standard. We say the good deeds of the normal people are the sins of the elect. And uh, the good... The good deeds of the elect are the sins of the elect of the elect. So the higher Allah takes you, the more you have to hold yourself to account. No? The more Allah will require from you. So he immediately understood. And as soon as he understood, he said, uh, he made ruko and he reverted to Allah and said, no, you have tested me. You have tested me. I judged from my own reasoning. I did not consult with you. Right. So this is a... Reminder to all of us that when we are put in a situation where we have to make a, uh, we have to react. Before we react, we go into a state of tauba. Right? So that is what it means to be uh, someone who attains tauba. Somebody who is always inside their heart is with Allah. Though outside they may be having as any normal human being. Okay. And then Allah says, so we granted him forgiveness to him about that. And he says, and truly for him with us is a place of proximity and an excellent place of return. Also a lesson for us. When you make sincere tawbah, Rabbana forgives immediately. Immediately, subhanallah. Not like us, huh? <laughs> subhanallah. So any anytime you feel that your heart has moved away from that connection with Allah, and it doesn't, it doesn't take long at all. And so again, you see that in the Quran. Hmm? Then Allah... Explains, he says, so we'll continue reading. Ayah 26, O David, we have indeed appointed you as a vicegerent on earth. Therefore, judge between people by the truth. And do not follow the false desires, lest it leads you astray from the way of Allah. So now he's explaining. And this is how our Lord teaches us. And he says, and here this word is important. Uh, ah. 
فحكم بين الناس بالحق فحكم exercise your wisdom or judge between the people بالحق so in our zikr we emphasize حق a lot because if you are in a state of truth since truth there is no diluting truth there is no 90% truth truth is truth absolute or no right so he says be in that state of truth because Allah is al-haq when you are with Allah so you are judging with truth so you are in a state of tawbah that's the meaning of that mm -hmm. and he says do not follow the false desires don't follow your own hawa because that can lead you astray uh, truly those who go astray from the way of Allah for them there will be a formidable punishment because they forgot the day of reckoning yeah. and then and we did not create we did not create the heavens and the earth and all that is in between them in vain uh, that is the thought of those who disbelieve but woe from the fire fire onto all those who disbelieve so Allah is reaffirming that nothing in creation is Oh, it's a coincidence. There is no such thing as coincidence. Coincidence is not a reality that exists. You know, the Muslim understanding of the creator and creation, coincidence has no reality. It is in the realm of the impossible. When you study theology, they'll teach you the realm of the possible and the impossible. So coincidence, no. There is no random occurrence. Everything, every single thing is by design. Uh, shall we make those who believe and do righteous deeds like those who spread corruption in the earth? Or shall we make those who revere Allah like those who transgress against their Lord? It is a book which we have sent down unto you full of blessings so that they may acknowledge in truth its signs and so that the people of heart take it for remembrance. This is a book that we should be remembering all the time. It is not meant to be kept on a shelf. To be taken down once a year this should be your manual reference reference all the time any problem in life refer <laughs> the manual is here okay so Allah says that huh? uh, and on to David we gave Solomon the best of our slaves truly he was a cry unto Allah when at even type was brought before him the steeds of Tharobri and he said, I indeed have taken the love of the good above the remembrance of my Lord until it, that is the sun, disappeared behind the veil of darkness. And uh, um, bring them back to me. And he fell to passing his hands over their legs and necks. And we had indeed tried Solomon and had thrown upon his chair a lifeless body. Then he returned to us in repentance. So this is also another famous story. Those who are familiar will know. Suleiman alayhi salam ruled after Dawood alayhi salam and Suleiman alayhi salam was a greater king yani he had greater a greater kingdom than Dawood alayhi salam and he used to love fine things this is known about Suleiman alayhi salam so but uh, these are people who Allah has given fine things uh, but they are always in a state of remembrance so at one time some beautiful horses thoroughbred horses were brought to him and he, he used to love horses and uh, he was uh, admiring them so much that he forgot his time of dhikr. And we say dhikr before the beginning of the night and before the beginning of the day. So this time is before uh, the sun rises and uh, before the night comes, we should be sitting in dhikr every day. That, that is essential to bring our heart back into remembrance. So you, you become aligned with the with the clock of nature because the muslim's life is a life in harmony with nature it is it this is the way we are meant to be not by times and clocks but with the sun and the moon and the stars this is a very it's a very beautiful lifestyle very natural so before the sun before the sun sets or before the night comes you should be sitting in dhikr and before the day comes you should be sitting in dhikr because these are times of transition when the day turns into the night and the night turns into the day and Allah mentions this transition many many times in the Quran so whatever he mentions so many times there is a spiritual reality we may or may not understand it but it behooves us uh, to take from it so the few minutes you spend in dhikr in these times brings a lot more benefit than sitting for hours at other times so this is also part of Allah's mercy that he's giving us the manual or the methodology so he says 
Um, so he forgot, right? The time of Dekar came and he's still admiring the horses, Suleiman Alayhis But then he made Tawba immediately, right? Immediately he recognized that he made Tawba. And he said, indeed, I have taken the love of the good above the remembrance of my Lord. Hmm? Uh, see? فَقَالَ إِنِّي أَحْبَبْتُ حُبُّ الْخَيْرَ أَنْ ذِكْرِ رَبِّي ذِكْرِ رَبِّي Right? So, subhanAllah, that's his state and this is our state, right? We enjoy the good all the time. We should always be thanking Allah for whatever good we enjoy. And then, and then Allah Azza wa Jal, immediately the story uh, moves to the time of his death. So, everyone knows that. Or maybe some of you are familiar with the death of Sulaiman alayhi salam. Do you remember? Ah, yes. <laughs> not, not to put you on the spot. So, um, uh, Sulaiman alayhi salam, you, you remember, Ashad. I can put you on the spot? No? Mm -hmm. No? <laughs> okay. okay, forgive me. So, uh, Sulaiman alayhi salam, um, uh, alayhi salam, alayhi salam. when he died, nobody knew he had died. Allah preserved his body. Oh. Yes, they only knew he had died because he had a staff. He was sitting on his throne. They all thought he was in dhikr until the ants ate up the staff and his body fell. Some mentioned that they fell by the ground uh, or something somewhere. Right? Uh, yeah. Buried in Sujurna. Yeah. 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 So, so this is how Sulaiman Ali said. So Allah is bringing it immediately to that point and he said, and, and we had indeed tried Solomon and throw it up, thrown upon his chair lifeless body, then he returned to us in repentance. And here also, uh, jasada thumma anaba. Again, that same word anaba is used, which was used to end the story of, or in the story of Dawood when he realized he had done something wrong. And then Allah says, with our, after all that, you know, when he made Tawbah, Allah says, then he made the wind subservient, subservient to him. It moved gently by his command wherever he aims. And the devils of every build, builder and diver, we made subservient to him and others bound together in fetters. This is our gift, so give or hold that without reckoning. And truly for him in our presence, surely is a station of proximity and an excellent place of return. So again, Allah is talking about how I rewarded him. So this is a magnanimous Lord. You do something wrong, you make tawbah and he says, I'll give you more. Give you more. And then uh, it goes on, and remember our slave Ayub, when he cried on to his Lord that Satan has indeed touched me with fatigue and suffering. Strike with your foot the ground, this is a cool bath and a drink. And it goes on, right? So that is about half of the surah that we read through. And then Allah mentions Ayub alayhi salam, and then Ibrahim alayhi salam, Ishaq alayhi salam, Yaqub alayhi salam, Ismail alayhi salam, Zulkifl alayhi salam. Many of the prophets are mentioned here. Hmm? Uh, hmm. Yaman alayhi yes, salam. Uh, and then the story of Iblis and how he became Shaitan, which we talked about also, and that ends the surah. But the the, the, the two stories we read, those are the, uh, you know, every surah, if you study it, there will be one key, one thing that's an anchor. These two stories and Inaba is an anchor there. So we take uh, Inaba from Tauba and Taslim. So we say Saad, one of the meanings of the, the, the letter Saad is going to these, these deeper realities of reversion. Right? So Wabi Saadi, Wabi Qafi, Wabi Noon. When we say that, we don't just say, oh, so we say that uh, these are some of the many ways that these, uh, these, um, these letters can be explained. If you go to Surah Kaf, maybe we'll have time to finish it today, Allah Ta'ala, so I'll go quickly. Um, Surah Kaf, which is uh, the 50th Surah in the Quran, is shorter. And all three of these Surahs are Makki Surahs. They were revealed in Mecca. 
And the characteristic of surahs that are revealed in Mecca is that they tend to be very spiritual, very uh, otherworldly, very mystical. And the Madani surahs are very all about uh, uh, establishing a state, so full of laws and things. Yeah? Uh, in Surah Qaf, there are two other, there's another story. Uh, it says Qaf by the glorious Quran. I will be having a shaitan regime. Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Qaf by the glorious Quran. Nay, they wonder that a warner came unto them from among themselves. So the disbelievers say, this is an amazing thing. Is it that when we have died and become dust, uh, we will be returned back to life? That is a returning far from happening. We do know that the earth takes away, we do know what the earth takes away from them. And with us is a book which guards well. Nay, they belied the truth when it came to them. So they are in an affair most confused. Have they not looked at the heaven above them, how we built it high and how we adorned it with stars and there are no flaws in it? And the earth, we stretched it and we set therein firm mountains and we caused to grow therein of every beautiful pair to be a clear sign and a remembrance for every slave who turns back to Allah. Again, Tabsiratan wa dhikra dhikuli abdi mumi. You can't avoid dhikr. Dhikr is the, is the foundation and the hallmark of, of a Muslim's life. Uh, this is dhikr wa ilm. Those are the only two things in the Quran. Allah says no limit all the time. You'll never be too much. Everything else in moderation, including worship in moderation. The dhikr and seeking knowledge. That should never, never, never cease. And he says everything that is in creation is a dhikr, is a reminder. Hmm. Yeah. And we sent down from the heaven a water most blessed, and we caused to grow wide gardens and grains for harvest, and date trees lofty with date stalks neatly arranged, and sustenance for the slaves, and we caused a dead land to come to life by it. Thus is the living port of the dead. Before them belied the people of Noah and the owners of the Ras, and Thamud, and Ad, and Fir'aun, and the brethren of Ruth. We have mentioned them again, which was mentioned in Surah Asad. And the owners of the wooded vale and people of Tubba, all of them belied the messengers, and so my warning came to pass. Were we ever worn out by the first creation? Nay, uh, they are now are in confusion about a new creation. And we indeed created the human being, and we know what his soul insinuates to him, but we are closer to him than the judge of the land. So this is that famous ayah that comes in Surah Qaf. When the two angels meet, one sitting on the right and the other on the left, uh, he does not utter a word except that in his presence there is a watcher well stationed. And the throes of death brought along the truth, uh, that is what you used to evade. Ah, again, haq. Wajaat sakaratul mauti bil haq. Subhanallah. The Arabic is stunning, no? Subhanallah. So the bajat uh, it brought the throes of death, sakratul mouth, the haq. Truth came. When you're in the throes of death, truth will come. No more turning right and left, you have to face it. Hmm? Subhanallah. So again, why we emphasize al haq that word, that, that is one of, that is our word, al haq Dalika ma kunta minhu tahid. This is what you used to evade, evade. In our life, we try to do everything we can to distract ourselves from facing the truth. The truth is Allah, Al-Haq. It's easier for us if we accept him into our lives every moment. Because you see how he rewards us the minute you make Tawbah, the minute you go into Inaba, his rewards are no bearing a grudge. So, ah. so it's better to accept that truth and live by it than try to evade it because you have to meet it uh, in any case. Now, uh, and the trumpet is blown into, that is the day of which the warning was made. And every soul came along with it, a driver and a witness. And indeed, we are in oblivion about this. And now we have removed from you your veil, so your sight today is sharp. So uh, we are in a state of being with hijab on, all of us, right? In this dunya, in the mulk, you are always veiled. Were Allah to remove the veils, you wouldn't be able to bear it. It is terrifying. 
but he will see your reality because out of Allah's mercy that he veils many things uh, from us but as we end, as our soul moves away from the bodily uh, existence and we are in this is this is the stage we are in we call it one of the five stages that the soul has to undergo uh, the shortest one of the shortest and also the most critical um, so once the soul goes moves out of this stage uh, the, uh, many other things will begin to be seen hmm? is that hijab will be taken away so which is why we say it is better you get your job done here then don't try to do the work in the grave so reach Allah while you're here become one of these words while you're here because you'll have to do it some point it's easier to do it here than when the hijab is removed and reality becomes very overwhelming this is a reality full of rahmah which Allah has said in the Quran, my rahmah encompasses all things. So the dunya is in a state of rahmah. Even though we may think life is hard and this and that and that and this, the truth of the matter is it's a short period full of rahmah. So our work is to try to attain one of these words that Allah loves. Hmm? Inshallah. Uh, and his companion said, this is what I have with me already. وَقَالَ قَرِينُ هَذَا مَا so this, the next few ayahs talk about the Karim. This is a, another issue most people don't understand. What is a Karim? Your intimate companion that is always with you. That's a topic in itself. So I will skip that for now because I want to finish, uh, finish with the verse. But we'll get back to that if Allah wills. So his companion said, this is what I have with me already. <coughs> so both of you throw in the hellfire every obstinate disbeliever. Every diligent withholder of good, every transgressive doubt in one, who made another deity with Allah, so throw him both of you in the formidable punishment. His companion said, O oh our Lord, I did not cause him to transgress, but he was in a misguidance far removed. So your intimate companion will betray you. He said, Do not quarrel in my presence, for indeed I had already given you the warning. The word does not change in my presence, nor am I a wrongdoer to the slaves. A day when we shall say to the hellfire, are you full? And it will say, are there more? And the garden is brought near for those who safeguard their own souls, not far at all. This is what had been promised to you for everyone who cries to Allah and guards well his duty, who fears a Rahman from the unseen and comes with a heart that has turned back to Allah. Man khashiya Rahman bil aibi wa ja'a bil qalbi munib. Again, inaba comes, right? Munib, one who is in reversion. Uh, enter it with peace and huh? slim comes. Yeah? So that's how that. that is the day of their lasting life. There will be for them therein all that they please, and from our presence there will be more. And how many a generation before them did we destroy who were greater than them in might? And they wandered throughout the lands. Was there any place of escape? Indeed, in that truly there is a remembrance for anyone who has a heart or for one who keenly hearkens while being a witness. Again, bitter comes. Think, Allah will say, remember, think, ponder. If your heart is clean, anyone who has a heart, yani a working heart, this will be very easy. Because it's, it's a win-win situation, Ya Rahman. It's not like you have to give up anything. All you do have to do is remember and Allah will just give you more and more. SubhanAllah. So it's good. And we indeed created the heavens and the earth and all that is between them in six days and no land will attend to us. Therefore be patient about all that they say and glorify the praises of your Lord before the rising of the sun and before the setting. So this is the ayah. Where Allah tells us how to be before the night comes and before the day comes. You should be in a state of sitting and making tasbih and glorifying Allah. He's already said, do this. So when he says do that, it means there is a benefit in it that we don't know. It's like, you know, you are told to eat this and this because it's good for you. Allah says, do this. It's good for you. Hmm? SubhanAllah. Hmm. Huh? Answer. فَاسْبِرْ عَلَى مَا يَقُولُونَ وَسَحْبِحْ بِحَمْدِ رَبِّكَ قَبْلَ طُلُوعِ الشَّمْسِ وَقَبْلَ أُرُوبِ Before the sun comes up and before it sets. 
and within the night do glorify him and in the wake of the prostrations and lend your ear for a day when the caller will call from a place near a day when they will hear the deafening shriek by the truth that is the day of the forthcoming of the dead truly it is we who give life and cause death and unto us is the place of final coming the day when the earth will be rent asunder from them hurriedly coming out that is a gathering very easy for us we do know about all that they say, but you are not a compiler over them, so remind them through the Quran, whosoever fears my name. And that is Surah Al Kaf. Um, um, this Surah and the, the, the story I wanted, it actually comes in Surah Qalam, the story of the gardens. This Surah is uh, very heavy very heavy but very laying out truths this is a surah of um, it's actually a surah of sabr because this is a surah of hilm this is Allah's forbearance that he's saying this 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 but not acting this is forbearance right explaining 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 as a mercy and this is one of the qualities of being uh, of helm that you don't you don't give what is due you hold your hand back hmm? this is a little harder to 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 explain inshallah and i was going very quickly because the time is short and maghrib has come in so uh, so excuse me for that so we'll stop here uh, inshallah we'll come to surat uh, or the, the, the word of the letter of me next week, be it in Allah Ta'ala. Um, any questions? Are all of these part of the 99 attributes? Very good question. MashaAllah, they all feed into that. So each of the uh, uh, Asma'ul Husna, uh, you can take these and you can keep dividing and dividing and dividing until you will cover mm -hmm. the 99. Um, so the Dua Basmillah we read, it has some of those. It's written according to some of those uh, divisions. Mm -hmm. nah. And the 99 names of Allah Azza wa Jalla are also studied in another way to explain our aqidah. You know, the, yeah, they come, they come uh, to this. Mm -hmm. Good. Okay. Alhamdulillah. Anything else? No, it was clear enough. So we'll make uh, we'll make dua and finish, inshallah. And this is uh, the dua of greeting, which is in English. So this one is in English, uh, inshallah. We begin in the name of the only, the one, the absolute, the all. The one who sustains but is not sustained, the one who creates but is not created, the one who is the origin of all, the all-powerful in front of whom there is no other power, the all-able in front of whom there is no other ability, the all-seeing, the all-hearing, the watchful over, the intimately near, the sublime, the apparent, the hidden, the only reality, truth transcendent, truth apparent, truth manifest, truth that cannot be denied, truth known even if unacknowledged, Truth that pours out of acknowledgement, the reality of all, the true state of being and all else is mirage, and the true state of existence and all else is fancy, 
The beloved of all who believe, the Savior of all who are saved, the guide of all those who wander, the one from whom we came, the one we return to, the one to whom we belong, a true breath that gives us life of our Lord, the eternal everlasting one, we raise our hands to you and we implore. We implore and raise the mention of your beloved, our liege Lord, our Savior, our Master, our Guide, the perfected one, the chosen one, the one whose true essence only you comprehend, O truth, the one whose light only you can truly see, O light, the one whose mercy is a breath of your divine mercy, O most merciful, the seal of the noble body of prophets, the leader of the noble messengers, the foremost knower of you, the greatest one among those conscious of you, the beloved of you and our beloved, the saint of our him, his noble family, his blessed companions, his friends and brethren, all those who love and obey and follow him for all time. Send your special blessings, salutations, peace and noblest greetings upon them for all time. And let your greeting upon them and upon us, our Lord, be the seal of your mercy, the emblem of your protection, the guard and the armor, the ennobling robes of right that clothes and own and distinguishes us upon the earth, in the grave and in our resurrection, the light that carries us over the bridge of swift as lightning, and the light with which we are cleansed and made beautiful, so we may present ourselves to you, O our Lord, without shame but in modesty. And by the light and strength and blessing of your greeting, O our Lord, we may bear to thee in your majestic and beautiful presence. O Allah, by the light of this greeting, we ask you to vanquish our enemies with a complete vanquishment. And O Allah, by the light of this greeting, we ask you to obliterate every obstacle placed in our path towards doing good and pleasing you, O our Lord. O Allah, by the light of this greeting, we ask that you open every door of nearness to you. O Allah, by the light of this greeting, keep us safe from loss, from grief, from wastefulness, from filth, from impure relations and from fear. We fear only you, O our Lord, and all our hope is in you. O Allah, by the light of this greeting, remove the veils that blind us from the light and strength and protection of truth. From knowing truth as truth and falsehood as falsehood. And O Allah, by the light of this greeting, give us the ability to stay away from what is false and enable, enable us to advance in what is good. O Allah, by the light of your greeting, cause our ascension. Allahumma bi nuri salamu ta tirfa'ana. Allahumma bi nuri salamu ta tirfa'ana. Allahumma bi nuri salamu ta tirfa'ana. Ya Rahman, Ya Rahman, Ya Rahman. And join us, O our Lord, as long as we remain here in the dunya, in a time in the barzakh, and after that, for the companionship, the intimate companionship by which all our loneliness is banished. And by which we are gladdened for those you have sent and established your eternal good, Ya Rahman. The most noble of all who come to me. Yeah.